Welcome everybody to Why Are You an Entrepreneur? And this is all about the trials and the triumphs. We meet every Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here. I'm Maureen Edwards. I'm the founder of Eight Simple Steps, where I work with entrepreneurs to eliminate all the overwhelm, the mistakes, and the complexity of either building, scaling, or even just starting their business. And I came up with this series to bring you rock star entrepreneurs from across the globe at all stages of their business so they can come and share that the journey of entrepreneurship is hard, but we're here to make it a little bit easier for you based on experience that we hope you can take insights, tips, tricks, resources out of this. And when I say rock star entrepreneurs, this is no exception. I have an amazing former corporate executive turned entrepreneur who is a founder, an author, and now the CEO of Poker Divas. And she will explain more about that. So Ellen Lakin, welcome. Hi, Maureen. Welcome. My dog welcomes you, too. She's trying to get in on the action. <laughs> That's OK. You know what? This is real time. You know, mine is usually yeah. pulling out a squeaker toy. Yeah, just right, as I go exactly. live. Just as you get, just as you get on, correct? Yes, yes. He sleeps all day and then all of a sudden the squeaker toy comes out. I'm like, why? Why do you do this? So, but I'm so excited to have you. I, I know that we had met in um, you know, a program that we were we were in together, and I just you just amazed me. You impressed me so much. And I wanted to bring you on because I think your journey is very relatable to other people. And so I'd like for you to share um, how you left corporate America and transitioned into entrepreneurship, what that looked like, and maybe some of the challenges that you experienced. Sure. Well, thanks for having me, Maureen. I, I love listening to your, your show, especially when I can listen to it live. So it's great to be here with you. And I, you know, entrepreneurship is, was almost accidental for me. I, as you mentioned, I, I grew up in corporate. I worked there for 15 years. My entire life around the dinner table was all about how are you going to serve being a, a corporate individual? And um, so I liked it and I loved it until one day I, I really didn't. Mm -hmm. And I had a, um, I'd always, you know, I was almost the entrepreneur in corporations. I was always trying to be the in, in, in innovator. And I think they call that an intrapreneur, right? So an intrapreneur. Yeah, entrepreneur. I think that's the new term that I have been hearing about because everybody says they want you to have an entrepreneurial spirit. Right. <laughs> So they want yes. that innovation and you had that. So, yes, I had that. But I'll tell you, as much as companies say they want it, a lot of them really don't. Because, so true. Right. I totally agree with you. Absolutely. They don't want you to have started a business and bring all that experience to them. I found the exact same thing. And I hear that from people. Yeah. And um, it's like, what what do you do? And so I guess you become a real business owner of your own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to, because if you have that that spirit of innovation and starting something new, I mean, it's great to have corporate resources to do it. I mean, people, money, um, you know, other minds to to rally around with you. But in, in the realities, most corporations don't want it. And I started rather than launching. I was my, my expertise and my experience is, is marketing in health and beauty, mass retail products, coming up with new launches and, and, and building brands. And I started doing that for an entrepreneur. So I, it was it was sort of a transition. They said, you know, we we have we keep launching new products. We want to build a brand. So they brought me in to build this brand. And then I got to see firsthand the difference between working for you know Fortune 500 and uh, and a small organization. Mm -hmm. And it was really exciting. I mean, it was challenging, too, without those resources and the speed. It was much faster. You know, in an organization, it can take you two, three, five years to launch something new. And you need, you know, 14 people to buy in. And that's not the case. You know, no. when you're doing it, it, it's just, I mean, you know that that's not the case. And that, you know, makes it really challenging, but also really exciting. But just being able to watch someone do that made me think, you know what, I can do this on my own. And I started, I started a side business called Poker Divas, which is 15 years old right now. And 
just as my first getting my foot wet in, in, in entrepreneurship. And I was able to do that having had that transition. And I love making my own decisions. I love the speed at which you can change or, or recreate what you're marketing, what you're selling, what your product is based on your, you know, your customers wants and needs. So it's been, it's been really fun and exciting, but you know, as, as you talk about a lot, it's just, it's, it's not always easy. There, there's a lot of challenges, especially when you're used to having all the resources. I know. So do you think that was one of your greatest challenges to go from you have everything and then all of a sudden you're kind of alone and have like nothing? Or were there other things that you discovered like leaving that and starting on your own that was hard? Well, that was hard. That was hard. Resources yeah. were hard, but also having the, the people around, you know, having a support team of people and bright minds is becomes more challenging when you're out on your own. And it took me a while to figure out how to get that by joining the right groups, not joining every group. It's funny because I think entrepreneurs tend to do this at the beginning. And I'd say that I get it, but it can be a waste of time. You join everything. You want to be involved in every group. You want to get every piece of information. You want to talk to everybody, everything. And that just becomes overwhelming. It's like doing too many things and doing none of them well. So that's what I did initially because I, I crave that um, community, so to speak. But then I found I was selective in what I what I proceeded to be involved with. And I was able to build a, a group of people, a support team of entrepreneurs and some corporate people, too. To, to help with some, some decisions that need to be made. You know, that's really smart because entrepreneurship is so isolating. I remember when I, I started my first company, all of a sudden I went from the corporate beautiful suits every day, dressing up to being in sweatpants in my basement. And I really, I did not reach out for a community at first. I thought, you know, I'll do it all on my own, but I think it's important the advice you're giving in and find the right community. This isn't yes. about you. And, but I think you have to do trial and error to find yeah. out which one is right for you. And then, you know, you know, learn from them and other entrepreneurs who have walked that journey. And now you probably have a great community of support. Yeah, I do. And you're right. You do have to start out as a trial and error. You just, you just don't know. You just don't right. know who's going to work for you and what's going to work for you. But, but you know, as a, as a quick hack, I would suggest that you 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 limp, you be more selective in who, in who you decide to, to connect with initially, because you so, need to run your business. You know, the oh. you, and not only run your business, that's the other challenge. You're running your business, but you also want to grow your business. So you have to carve out that time to really make a plan for your business and say, what am I going to do to get better as opposed to being reactive? And it's hard, you know, you, initially, especially if you go out as a solopreneur, you are reactive. That's the nature of the business. It's got to get done. It's but, very, very true. Yeah. Very true. I find a lot of people, though, they skip the community and they say, I'll just YouTube my way to building this business or I'll Google it. And I say, you know what? Get a mentor, get a coach, get a community or a tribe that you can bounce ideas back and forth, which is more real world, you know, right there and communication. Don't don't try and do it all on your own. So I think that's that is such smart advice. And I think we all I, I have heard every time somebody comes on here, Ellen, they say the exact same thing. So we're saying to entrepreneurs out there, we have done this, we've tried it on our own, and we find that we're more successful when we surround ourselves with, with other smart people. So I want you to share with everybody, you started Poker Divas, which is the coolest name. So I want to know what this is and what the concept is and how you came up with building a whole company around this. Okay, well, you know, Poker Divas just came about because it was it was it was a freak thing. I when I when I left corporate, I, t I did take a hiatus. I, I admittedly took about a year off, and I started doing. You know, I started pursuing different hobbies that I had had before. And one of my hobbies was playing cards. I used to play cards with my mother when I came home from school. You know, most kids were making cookies, and I was playing. You know, Texas uh, Texas Hold'em with my mother. So. <laughs> Um, I started, you know, I had some time and I was dabbling, I was playing cards and then, you know, in really in New York, but all over the country, I'm from New York, if you can't tell, 
and I all over the country. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I lived there too at one time, so I'm right. all I'm there. <laughs> so, so there are all these poker, you know, charity events, networking events, and they're and they're a lot of fun. They're they're a lot of fun. And somebody invited me to one, and I had never been to one before. It was really big. It was a PR event for this new up and coming technology company. And I walked into, I said I would go. I was kind of nervous. I didn't know anybody else there. And I walked into the room and there were about 90 men and five women. And I said to myself, you know, this is golf all over again, right? I mean, right. golf is a male dominated sport. And when I was at, you know, corporate sales meetings, then guys would be on the golf course playing golf with senior management, connecting, getting promoted, making deals. And, you know, the women were off doing, you know, their own thing in the spa, getting nothing. So, you know, here it is, it, it reminded me of the same thing. And when I walked out of that, I said, you know what, I'm gonna, I, there's something here, professional women need to get involved in this game because it's not only great for networking and socializing, it's also extraordinarily strategic. It's about reading other people. It's about getting comfortable taking risks, doing something that's out of your comfort zone. And I said, I'm gonna start a company, Poker for Professional Women. I really had no idea what I was doing. It was just a thought. <laughs> and I went home that weekend and I wrote a curriculum. I wrote a, a, a one page letter basically saying what the company is. And I, and I did a snail mail at the time. I did a snail mail and I got a taker. I got a Lure Magazine was my first client. No and, way. Yes. They were my first client. I remember just vividly. I went into their boardroom. It was a gigantic long table. It was before I had staff working for me. And there were 12 people. It was a small event. And I just came up with this program. And, you know, teaching women, and now it's it's really everybody, but teaching women how to use poker strategy to be better leaders, better negotiators, understand their team better, understand themselves better and get into this play to win mode, you know, play to win, which is power versus not to lose, which is fear mode. And that's how the company started. And I did it on the side for many, many years. I, I, I continued to launch new products for different entrepreneurs. Um, some of them becoming, you know, huge businesses, one a billion dollar brand. And I started, you know, growing the business, this business on the side, I wrote a book about it. I got a book deal, how to win in love, life and business using the principles of poker. And it was geared strictly initially for women, but because the, you know, you know, you can't navigate any industry, whether you're an entrepreneur or a business person, you know, with, with just one gender, it, it's, it's open to everybody now. And what's great about it is you get to see poker actually allows you to see people's true personalities come out. You don't even have to say a word. You see who the aggressors are. You see who's good at taking risks. You see who's good at reading other people and being patient. And so now, you know, we, we're in, we do a lot of diversity and inclusion events, CLE programs for law firms, sales meetings, women's initiative programs. And it, so it just literally, it started based on that one event, which by the way, was wound up being for Netflix. And I got free Netflix for life at that event that night, um, which you know, I didn't know how great that would be. <laughs> this story, like, I honestly did not know, like, the history of how this started. Like, yeah. I know you as, you know, the CEO, the founder of Poker Divas. I've, you know, gone through your master classes on this. So, but to know the story is true entrepreneurship. And I yeah. just, I love it because you had like this aha moment. You knew yeah. there was a gap somewhere and that's what it's all about. It's a gap. And then it was up to you to decide, am I going to go for this? So like, how is my, my brain going to work? Because I think I can make something out of this and I cannot believe the way this started. So kudos to you. So anybody out there, and this was a side hustle. So everybody out there right. who thinks their side hustle is just, I, I have decided I want to change the name of a side hustle because it makes it seem like you're not serious. You're just freelancing, bouncing around. And look, you've built an entire company with huge companies who you work with and something that started with a game. Yeah. Just a game. Yeah. I, and, and to your point, Maureen, I think, you know, side hustle, it's, it's a good idea. If you're in your job, you can have a side hustle. You don't have to quit your job tomorrow and see if you like it. You know, it's, it's something that it's, it's okay to try something on the side and see if, you know, not everyone's cut out to be an entrepreneur either. Totally you know, agree. 
I think that's something you you know that people have to realize also. So so if d to doing it on the side is often very valuable to see if if, if you if you're cut out for it. But yeah, the nice thing about being an entrepreneur is you really make your own economy. It's not, like a trial and error and yeah. work off of somebody else's like resources, paying the bills for you to get your your footing. And I, I, you know, all of these interviews, all of these conversations that I have every week, this comes up and people have started their companies through, you know, a side hustle or yeah. recommend some jumped full force and have said, I wish I hadn't. I wish that I had done this on the side and, and saw it and, and felt like if this was for me before I left my job and did it. So I think it's good advice for anybody out there who keep your day job, yeah. keep your day job until I think you can replace your, your salary or at least cover all of your expenses. Yeah. I think that's, you know, the the way to go. So with um, Poker Divas, can you tell me like what you felt was like, and still is maybe, what are the greatest challenges that your company has being in business? You've been doing it 15 years. Everybody has challenges regardless of the stage or the age yeah. of their business. What do you think are some of the greatest challenges right now with your company? Well, the biggest challenge for us in the, in the most recent years was COVID because the, the business is, is live. It's live programming, live, you know, live learning, live corporate yeah. education. So that was, you know, how do you, how do you, you're, you're bit, basically you're in business one day and you're out of business the next. So okay. how do we come up with a program that's interactive and fun and not just a webinar using the same strategies and straight, straight, same learnings. And we did that. It took about nine months to come up with something that we were satisfied with because I wasn't going to just launch something just for the hell of it. And that was a huge challenge. And it was well received because it, it maintained into the interactivity of the live programs as much as you can virtually, which you can. A lot of it you can yeah. maintain. And the learnings obviously were the same. And we were able to, you know, send out swag boxes in advance to to stimulate, you know, simulate what we do in live because we give out a lot of stuff for people. We give out the books and the workbooks and the classes. So that was a huge challenge, but it was also a good opportunity because it allowed it allowed further expansion of the brand internationally. We had started doing live events internationally, but now it's just much, much of it, much easier. And it also let us offer our clients who had international um, teams to mesh with their U.S. teams. So so that was an upside. But having said that, it was not an easy pivot. It, it was not an easy pivot. And um, but I'm glad we made it through. And I think the, the other thing that's that's very difficult is, and even more so now is is staffing. You know, mm -hmm. getting you know, you can hire when you're a small company, you can't hire everybody as a full-time position. So you rely on, on contractors and contractors are hard to get. They disappear. They, um, you know, they don't, they don't necessarily have the commitment of your business. Like, you know, like you do. And it's, it's really your job to give them the impetus and the, and the interest to, to, um, help you move make your business better but it, it is a challenge particularly now a lot of people don't want to work gosh we hear that all the time i mean that makes national news right yeah, but yeah. i love how you pivot you pivoted because like you said you know one day it's all going fine and then the whole place shuts down it's like oh. i got a company to run i built this this is my livelihood so the fact that you could adapt a lot of businesses were not able to do that um and you did, but yeah. you know, it wasn't easy. I mean, my, my company now um, was, is a COVID pivot because it's, it's an educational platform and mentoring that we do, you know, digitally when before it was face to face. And so we either move forward with what we're given or we say, all right, I guess I'm closing up shop. <laughs> and that's, that's not, that's not the alternative is I say to people, sit down, put your creativity hat on, which is what you did. Yeah. And, um, and then try and come up with a plan after. So tell me what your greatest success has been so far with your company. I think the that's that's a good question. Um, one of the the greatest successes we had was, you know, it really comes from 
from hearing from the people that have been through the program and how they've used the information, particularly with regard to negotiation. You know, I didn't know that going in, but poker strategy and the skills you pick up reading other people and, and being able to get comfortable with risk make you a very good negotiator. So I love, like I heard, I, I hear many stories with one person that had been in a, in a position that she was trying to get out of for the last three years. And she just finally, so to speak, went all in one day and gave an ultimatum and she got, she got a C-suite position from it. So stories like that, um, I love to hear. And, and, and the other thing that, 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 I'm particularly proud of is the fact that now we are, um, we're not just for, for women's initiatives. We are for everybody and everything, which brings a lot of value to diversity and inclusion. And that's a really important component of Poker Divas is, is inclusion. And, and now I'd say our, our events are really split between, between um, women's initiatives and, and, and mixed programs. So that was something I did not expect and that really has propelled for the last couple of years and made it made the business even stronger and more powerful because it's more powerful when we can do it when we can do it together and when we understand other people you know people you know this it's all about people whether you're playing poker whether you're an entrepreneur whether you're in a corporation whether you're in a, a relationship whether you're sitting at the kitchen table it's all about the people it and, is so it, it, you kind of like it kind of morphed and evolved into something else, which is what businesses do. How did that come about? Did somebody reach out to you and say, look, this, this is not just for women. I, you know, want to put together maybe a team building, you know, event or something. So how did it kind of evolve into this, this other phase of diversity, inclusion, all, all comers? Well, it's interesting because the first time it happened, it's, it's a law firm that we work with for the last 10 years, every year. We did a program for their incoming associates and they, they had seen the program. They said, can men come? And we said, okay, sure. You know, the, you know, the, the teachings apply to everybody. There are some, there are some female centric elements to poker divas, but you know, women have been living with male centric brands forever, right? You have Johnny Walker, you have Slim Jim, you know, we've been adapting to male centric. So that's okay. We have a female centric brand that shouldn't be a deterrent. And so we, I, I, I saw basically, you know, what's the same learning and they're also now understanding each other. You know, they, they understand each other at the table. And so that was the first time. It was just it was it was just a very small part of the business. And then somebody else said, "Well, you know, our team is co-ed. Why can't we do this for everybody?" Somebody who had experienced it for from a lot of people use this also for, for business development. Yes. So one of our clients had another client there, and they said, "Yeah, I'm going to bring this to my team, but can we bring can we bring in men?" Yeah, sure. Let's let's try it. So slowly but surely it just became something that people were requesting. We accommodated it. And don't forget, men love poker. Men yep. love poker. Men yeah. love getting into the minds of women. So why wouldn't they want to come to a Poker Divas event? Um, and and so, yeah, it was, and, and now, in fact, we did an event, uh, live event, first one in a very long time, a couple of weeks ago, it was, it was 80%, not female. Oh, wow. So, yeah. So it's, it's really, you know, again, it's about inclusion and, and, and there are, you know, there's always two sides to should something be all, you know, a, is, there, is there a need for a women's initiative? In fact, does that further divide people? And I think the important thing is you want people to be in a forum where they're comfortable so that they get, they get comfortable doing it so that they can do it in any forum. And that's what, that's what we do. I love the evolution of your company. Yeah. Uh, so do we see a rebranding happening from, you know, like poker divas, poker divas and doers or something like that? <laughs> poker divas and doers. All right. I just came up with your new name, right? I love it. That's right? so poker divas. We had one, one of our clients put up a big sign at, at the, um, this was pre COVID at the convention center that said poker divas and dudes. So, oh, that's <laughs> even better. So, I mean, you you could do that, you yeah. know, but you are so ingrained, you know, with your identity, your brand identity. It's probably too hard to do it, but I don't know mm -hmm. that if you continue with this evolution of it and you find that 80 percent men coming. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? It, it could be in your future. Listen, anything's possible. You know that as an entrepreneur, Maureen, anything is possible. Yeah. 
but um you know again it's 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 female centric and that's okay because that just if if people you know everybody everybody's included if they want to show that's that's fine that's fine but we you know my heart my heart and and I, I want to make this really clear is helping women excel professionally. And that is why I'm so passionate about poker, poker divas and personally too. I don't want to just limit it to the professional, but I see that so many women are afraid to ask for more. They're afraid to ask period. They don't advocate for themselves. They don't want to brag. Um, they are concerned about negotiation because they don't want people not to like them or think they're difficult. And, and that's, it's, I don't know if it's our wiring or whatever it is, but I, uh, that's something that I'm passionate about changing. And that's why I also launched a, you know, our events, as you know, are corporate. Right. But, but the feedback has always been so good about negotiating that I launched about, I think it's almost a year now, a course on how to negotiate for yourself using the principles of poker because we're great at negotiating for others, right? Yeah. But we're often not negotiating for us, not so, negotiating for ourselves. So if people wanted to reach out to you about this course or yeah. setting up an event with you, um, you know, what, how can they get a hold of you with that? Do you want to put that information in the chat for them? Um, I certainly would like you to give your website and your social media platforms out there for people to read. Sure. sure. I, I will put the it's it's the course is called the bold system course. And, and I'll put that in the chat. And if you want to reach out to me, I'm Ellen at poker divas with an S, not polka. A lot of people think it's polka. It's poker. Divas. <laughs> it's funny. You can't imagine it. It's polka. Um, so poker, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So yeah, and feel free, you know, reach out, feel free to reach out to me. Um, and our, the poker divas website is uh, pokerdivas.com and you can read about leadership team building programs that we do. Um, you know, we have, again, it's corporate and, it, and now we have this individual component that also came out of COVID being able to reach because in people, the other thing that I'm noticing through a lot of the groups that I'm in is that people are they're wanting to leave their their corporate jobs they just don't want to devote themselves to work no 24 7. they want to do something for themselves and that's what that's how this was really created between the response we got from our corporate people and the needs that they have now that's why i created this bold system program i love the evolution i love the creativity this is like opening up new channels of distribution. This is scaling. This is what it's all about. And you got to take the risks with it and, and a calculated risk. I don't just say, you know, yes. willy -nilly. so, so what would be your last bit of wisdom for an entrepreneur out there who maybe is struggling with the journey? What would you recommend? Well, if you're struggling with the journey, know that we all struggled. At the very at the very beginning, we all struggled. If you're passionate about it, you will work through the struggle and you'll get to the other side. But if you're not passionate about it, um, you know you may you may want to reconsider. You may you may want to reconsider what you're doing. There's there's no shame, as we say in poker. There's no shame in folding and trying something else. Maybe <laughs> you're, right? I mean, in reality, yeah. people tend to stay in things too long. We hold yeah. on, we wait, we wait, we wait till the last minute. So we're, we're short stacked, as we say, and, and we're desperate. We're acting in desperation mode rather out of choice, rather than out of choice. You want to be intentional and selective. And, you know, just because you're not loving what you're doing, maybe, maybe you're still meant to be an entrepreneur, but you're meant to be doing something else. But if you are passionate about it and you have a plan, you will get through, you will get through the difficult times. And I just want to go back to one thing you said, Maureen, about risk. And, and we talk a lot about the selective risk versus reckless risk taking. Right, right. And in poker, they're, they're two different personalities. There's that crazy person at the table that's constantly bluffing no matter what. And they're constantly raising the pot, even though the odds are against them. And then there's the very aggressive player who selectively picks the hands they play and plays them hard. If there's an entrepreneur, you want to be a selective risk taker. I love it. What a great like last 
last comment um, to leave everybody with. So, because we're almost at the 30 minute mark and oh, okay. I, I, keep, I know the conversation oh, like yes. by. Um, I learned so amazing, so many amazing things, Ellen. Like I, I'm kind of blown away. I'm trying to process all of this. And, and for those of you out there, please reach out to Ellen. I mean, she has shared amazing things and this, this program is impactful and unique and it sounds like it's super fun. So, uh, you know, reach out to her. So will you come back at another time and, uh, and share more wisdom with me? I'd be happy to, Maureen. It's great talking with you. And uh, thank you for having me as one of your guests. I really enjoyed it. Oh, I'm, I'm privileged to have you. So thank, thank you. you. So for everybody out there tonight, we're going to wrap this up. Uh, if you need anything from me, you can contact me at 8simplesteps.net, as well as LinkedIn, Facebook. Send me a message. Let me know how things are going on and how I can help you. And we will be back next Thursday with another rock star entrepreneur ready to share their journey uh, and share the, the inspiration and wisdom that they have. I will see everybody soon. Ellen, thank you again. And uh, I think we're out of here. Okay. Thanks, Maureen. Bye. Bye.